hollow stems next. Now, this is another thing that you had talked about in your talk at the Soil Summit. Hollow stems, some stems are hollow, some aren't. Talk to us about hollow stems. Yeah, so this is another one kind of like the cloning one where there's a white paper that I, you know, people, it, it's funny. I, I answer the phones at KISS. I answer a lot of the grower questions at KISS. And so I'll get an email on Monday morning that's essentially, um, hey, hollow stems are this. Want to fight about it kind of thing? And I'm like, no, I don't want to fight about it. But here's what I understand about it. And so wh what I ask for anytime, you know, um, I'm, I'm on one side or the other of a conversation with somebody is I ask them for the, you know, where did they get their data? Where, where did they, you know, what are they basing this on? Is it experiential? And I'm not knocking experiential, you know, a hundred years ago, we didn't have necessarily, um, you know, a, a, a lot of scientists were hot. That was a hobby for them. They might be a mailman and they come home and look at the stars at night and they figured something out or they're, uh, you know, they have a, a greenhouse that they, you know, work on orchids on the weekend. And, you know, and so experience is how you get to the math side where you can start to prove something, you know, to yourself, you know, how do I know this? And, you know, and if you can replicate it, um, hollow stems in plants that don't normally uh, exhibit a hollow stem, uh, it can be a, a deficiency or a disease. And um, it happens uh, in brassicas. So uh, broccoli, it's very common. Um, and it, uh, I think it's calcium and boron. Um, I'm, I'm kind of blanking right now, so don't quote me on that, but I think it's calcium and boron in brassicas that creates that. But the paper that people cite for this plant is based off of brassicas. And so again, it's accurate for that plant, but not for this plant. And so, um, this plant can exhibit either a pithy solid, uh, stem or a hollow stem, most of the time it's pithy. And so people get really worried about hollow stems. They also get really worried about hollow stems when they're doing propagation. Um, one clue when I was younger uh, about hollow stems is, you know, one, I always had really good propagation rates no matter what. So that was interesting to me. I thought, you know, um, you know I knew a plant wasn't a straw, but it was still you know, kind of interesting that I was still getting these good germ rates, but, um, I was only seeing it outside. I rarely saw it indoor. You know, I've, I've had some people, you know, really want to get to the bottom of it. And so with this plant, it's temperature regulation. And so having that hollow stem enables the plant to more efficiently, um, you know, so air changes temperature much faster than water. Right. And so, that's why I get these incredible, uh, nice, cool days out here in the Puget Sound because I'm surrounded by cool water. And so when it's 100 in Seattle, it's maybe 78, 80 degrees out here. And um, so if there's air in that stem, that plant can very rapidly change temperature compared to if there was holding a bunch of water in there with all this um, pith and organic matter. And so... When I read that explanation, that that seemed to make sense to me. That's something that, you know, checked all the boxes. Um, so that's my understanding of it. And that's, you know, based off, again, I'm an MPK guy, but that's based off of, you know, research done by some really smart people who are, who are very qualified. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrowIt15 to save on any of their products. Thank you.